Happy National Sibling Day. Let's go. You are Locked On Guardians. Your daily podcast on the Cleveland Guardians. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's show. Uh, today's show is brought to you by eBay Motors. They have over 122 million parts to keep your ride or die alive with all the parts you need at the prices you want. It's easy to bring home the win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible bottoms only, exclusion supply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Whew. I am Jeff Ellis, one of your two co hosts. You get the, the expansive look of my, um, my downstairs, the Turtles arcade machine, and the specifically Guardians blue wall here. Uh, Justin was at the game tonight. He tried to do a now from the game and they asked him to leave. Uh, that is not a joke. That's the truth. They wanted to clear out because it was a long game, but we have a fun game to talk about uh, before. And to do the intro, I am Jeff Ellis. Been here since the inception of the baseball side of the podcast network was a former lead draft and prospect analyst nationally. It's gotten 24 seven featured on the John Stash Hour show. Uh, I thought I'd throw out some fun history because today is uh, the day of recording, not the day you're listening is a weirdly fun day in Cleveland Guardians baseball in 1977. Uh, Cleveland beat Boston 19 to nine. And in the eighth inning, uh, Cleveland scored 13 runs at Boston six, most ever in an inning in 82. <laughs> they had to pull out 500 tons of snow from municipal stadium to play a game. Uh, 2007. I remember quite well. That's when they started playing a series in Milwaukee because the weather was so bad in Cleveland. 2012 was the Carlos Santana extension. I wish we had some extensions to talk about now that we have other fun things. 2013 was the Red Sox passing the guardians record for sellouts. And 2014 is Danny Salazar setting a record for within 10 batters without finishing the fourth inning. Oh, Danny Salazar. Having thrown some history there and everyone having tuned out between that and not having Justin here, I do want to thank all of our everydayers, everyone who stayed in the stick around. Great people like David and John, I see all the time. Uh, you know, uh, uh, everyone's great. I, I enjoy everyone in the comments. It, it's it's always a good time, uh, even when Jerry Reinsdorf showed up in his burner account. Uh, let's talk about this game. Well, there was also a trade uh, we got to get to. Not Not the most important trade. But you know that uh, if I could, I would adopt Tanner Bybee. I know he's, uh, you know, like only t close, uh, not even, what, like 17 years younger than me? It's not exactly the, the age at which you can do such things, but we love him to death here on the show. This is another not so great start for him. He struggled with command, which is weird uh, because throughout his career, that was his calling card. And that was the issue in the first game against Oakland. And we heard there was like issues with the win there. It was also affecting it. I, this felt like a high wind game in Cleveland. I, I know some might argue I'm making excuses, but with all the home runs, can't we say this was a pretty windy game? Maybe that's the reason. Um, not what you want to see for him with the just the two strikeouts as well. Um, the three walks all came back to hurt him. You know, six hits in. You know, he had nine base runners in those four and a third innings. He just could not get on a roll. It's not been a great start to the year. He'll rebound. We believe in him. But how about the job that Penn did? I mean, no earned runs. Yes, Morgan gave up a run. Um, you know, it was tight with Class A. BD had us a little worried. But and everyone took care of business. And what a pitch for BD to get that strike three. The bullpen's a story in the early going. Uh, do you know what Class A's ERA is? Well, it's the same as BD's, which is the same as Sandlin's, which is the same as Smith's. Zero. Like, what a job. We were worried about this bullpen, as we should be. You lose Stefan. You don't have henches. The bull, the starting rotation is not pitched well. Uh, if you told me the starting rotation was going to be a weakness for this team, I would have predicted them to be below 500. But the bullpen has just been magnificent. Now, can they keep it up all year? I, I don't. I doubt it. You know, there's ups and downs. That's how this stuff works. But, yeah, I mean, Morgan gave up the unearned run. Uh, I definitely had some trepidation when he came in, but he got through Cleveland came, comes back. And that's just the story again. Like yesterday they came back and they couldn't put it away. They're down five, nothing again. And they come back and they come back and they win it in extras. That's why I wrote 
the won't quit kids, like the can't quit kids, whatever you want to call it. These young guys is mostly still a very young team. I don't know if they're youngest in baseball anymore. I haven't looked that up. But this super young team does not quit. Like if you turn this one off, I, I can understand. When I was sitting there in the third, it was it was frustrating to watch. But boy, you're gonna miss out. This is this is a team you cannot turn off. They they and yes, if you want to be a negative Nelly. You could sit there and be like, oh, the White Sox are terrible. They're two and ten. And you almost lost the series to them. And they came back because it's the White Sox. And my famous quote, like bad teams find ways to lose. Good teams find ways to win. Chicago gave them this game thanks to what an error, a walk, and a hit batter. It's the only reason this thing went into extras. Um, yeah, you know, there were issues. Like I said, starting pitching wasn't great. Bottom of the lineup was pretty terrible. But Cleveland fought through. They came back. The bullpen kept them in this one. And they pull out the win. And that's in the end, it doesn't matter if you win by one, you win by 30. It would be kind of crazy to see a 30 win game, let's be honest, or 30 running win. But they took care of business. And when your bullpen is as good as this one's looked, and what happens when you get henches back? What happens when it just becomes undeniable that Andrew Walters might be your uh, five, one of your five best relievers, and he's he's down in uh, the minors? Like Franco Alamon. We might need to slow our roll on him. It's 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 not going great out of the start. Uh, you know, we don't have time to get in the minors. But if you haven't been paying attention, <laughs> the guys you're most excited about, Martinez is hurt. The lot of man's are massively scuffling, and Alamon's velocity is, isn't where it was. So uh, you're not going to see a lot of help coming from the minors for this team in the immediate future. But you you don't need it. You know, get get Gavin Williams healthy. Get him in this rotation. Get Henches back up. Just get healthy as much as you can. And there's a lot of fun things going on. Is there things that need to improve? Absolutely. Like I said, if you go into this game, the bottom of the lineup is just absolutely atrocious. I used to do this thing, which I'll do again. Okay, here, we're going to do a, a throwback. I used to do three stars of the game and a box score bingo. So the box score bingo of this one was like 9, 14, and then what, two hit batters, right, for uh, the Cleveland would have had. I, I lost it in here. I lost him. Uh, 14, 16. Cleveland should have scored about five runs and they got seven because of the home runs. So you always overscore that one. On the other side, you got three walks. And I mean, Chicago should have had 15 runs. They got six. Uh, Cleveland just, you know, the, the home runs got him across. The bullpen got him across. I Well, Brennan had two big walks. Uh, but it is right now very ugly for Brennan. He can't hit fifth. That's my biggest complaint takeaway. My other one is at this point, from this point going forward, I know Brennan reached two out of five times. That's, you know, he's on base 40%. That's fantastic. Let's just let Freeman and center every day with Quan and Laureano on the sides. I, I just, Brennan has Oscar Gonzalez syndrome right now. He is swinging at almost everything. And it's hard to watch. Um, Bo Naylor had two very timely hits, also expanded the zone, but it's nice to see him have a multi-hit game. I think he was 0 for 15 heading into that home run. He had he had really struggled of late. Florial. Ugh. Listen, I didn't like the trade when it happened, and, and people thought I was being negative. He has been the constant tool tease. He is just, he always teases you with his tools and he's never until last year had a good season, a big time season in the minors. And when guys are, I believe repeating levels, I believe he was repeating level. I could be wrong. That's typically not the sign you want to take. That's why it, it, not always I was lower on Will Benson because he was always good at the repeating of levels. And I thought like that was the sign. The guardians tried to pull a reverse Benson. It hasn't worked. It doesn't look like it's going to work. Um, I would like to see less Florio and more Arias because at least Arias last year hit. Like I know he hasn't looked good either this year, but last year he showed he can do it. Um, and then Rocchio, beautiful, brilliant defensive play um, in extras. Man, when he's batting, he looks lo a little bit lost right now. All that like positive, you know, momentum in that first few games with him, it's gone. The bottom of this lineup is is not doing it, but Quan is just. He's not going to hit 386 all year, but let's enjoy it right now. It's been great. Jimenez came up with timely hits. Jose, not his strongest game. Naylor was a was a monster, of course. You know, National Sibling Day. Had to state that because the fourth time in Major League history that a pair of brothers um, homer in the same inning. I, I remember one of them was the Ripkins and the Uptons. 
I can't remember who the third one was. You can comment below um, if you can remember that. But yeah, it just, end of the day, this was such a fun game because for the second day in a row, they came back. They, there was no quit. There was no quit in this team. The bullpen was just nails. No one can, this is right now the best bullpen in baseball statistically. They've been utterly phenomenal. The bullpen was great. The hitters did just enough. The White Sox were just bad enough to help the Cleveland out. And Cleveland gets the win to move to 9-3 and three overall. It's a fantastic game. So much fun. We're going to talk a little bit more about this. We're also going to talk about why they added Wes Parsons. Uh, all in a moment here on Locked On. You know that I am always excited when we get a brand new sponsor. And that's what we got today is our friends over at Policy Genius. I am not the person who knows the best things when it comes to insurance. I don't know. I, I definitely probably should be learning more every day about things like life insurance, especially as I'm getting older. Policy Genius is here to be an important safety net for your family. Uh but trying to find the correct policy, like anything in life, trying to find the correct, it can be extremely time consuming and they want to help you with that. They want to cut out the time consuming. It is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It saves you time and money so you can provide your family with financial safety net starting today. With Policy Genius, you can find insurance policies that start at just $29.92 a year for a million dollars of coverage. Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Uh, Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies and their team of licensed experts is on hand to help you talk your way through it. So they're going to help you find the plan for you. You can talk to a team of award winning agents who are going to walk you through the process and easy to compare quotes from America's top insurers. Uh, your work life insurance policy may not be enough to meet your family's needs. This is where Policy Genius comes in. Uh, they give you an unbiased advice from a licensed expert team. They have no incentive to recommend anyone. They're just there to help you. You have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot from customers. They get their business by making sure they're doing good for you business-wise. So check out the insurance. So check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash locked on MLB or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's Policy Genius dot com slash locked on MLB. Now let's talk about our good friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The Formula for Winning Championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your right every time for your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins like today. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. And the the awkward transitions of the things I don't always have to do during a show. Okay, there we go. Let me, let me flip this back to me. And uh, make sure to check out the game on Sirius XM Radio. They've got you covered. So let's do the, the three stars. The other thing I used to do back in the day. Um, Bo Naylor had the big hit. So that, that that's easy. And a home run. Uh, and his was the two-run home run. I think you got to give it to Josh as well. So you get both brothers. And... It's, you know, if I could just give it to the bullpen, I would just give it to the bullpen. But I think you got to give it to Quan for the third one who, you know, para hits one of them being the home run. Um, dude just keeps hitting. You know, there's not much you can say. Uh, I would like to see a little more David Fry as well. I don't know how this team can figure that out and get a little more Fry in. But I would definitely like I'd rather see Fry out there right now more than uh, Florial. But it's it, they're eating too. It's a fun team. I could spend the whole show just talking about like how good Tim Heron looked, how Cade Smith continues to dominate, how Tyler Beatty is like a team leader after being there two weeks, as well as like his excellent performances so far. Uh, class A, 
can I be honest? Like when they brought him in, I'm like, oh no, like everything's been going so well for him. I, I felt like if he were to get off the rails, it'd be in a situation like this. And, and it looked like it might. Um, that the Jong hit was junk. Like it was just, it was classic bat pip. Like that is a pitch most guys are going to just hit in the air. Um, he swung at a pitch, <laughs> shouldn't have swung at and turned it into a double. That was like back to back innings where why, why are balls getting hit over our outfielders' heads? With nobody on base, like it drove me a little nuts. But the Jong hit, and then um, against Morgan, I'm trying to remember who hit that one. But you know, Classy comes back and gets the double play. Uh, you know, misfields the bunt first, but then he gets the double play and you know gets out of that inning. Only uses so really only eight pitches. That just strikes me as odd. Um, but I guess it was only eight pitches for him. Bullpen is so efficient, so good. Well, team, so good. If you're not supporting this team, I don't know what's wrong with you right now. This is a fun squad. Like, I am having fun with every single game. Um, you know, I'm sitting there with it on my tablet, off to the side while I read books at bedtime, being a terrible father. But uh, my daughter is appreciating. <laughs> Who's winning? Who's winning? Who's the other team? Um, but, it, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. Comment below. What was your favorite part of this game? What stood out? What is what is your good? What is your bad? I uh, agree or disagree on the three stars while we're at it. I'm just going to do my reminder to, you know, make sure you've turned on alerts. We have, uh, we were going through our analytics the other day, Justin and I, and like almost nobody gets alerted. when We post shows. So if you're one of that 9% comment below, I uh, would love to know who, who you are. So Wes Parsons, this caught me by surprise. And if, uh, if I were to tell you that uh, I had almost no knowledge of Wes Parsons heading into the day, that would be the truth. You, most of you out there probably knew, about as much about Wes Parsons as I did. Interesting player. You know, he was an undrafted free agent uh, way back in like 2013 out of uh, Jackson State Community College. Now let's let's do the baseball reference thing. Other players from Jackson State Community College. Ross Grimsley from 71 to 82 and Luis Martinez from 2011 to 2012. And uh, those, are, those are the guys they have listed who... Who made it directly from their that school? Not not exactly. Uh, again, it's community college. It's hard for these guys to, to get noticed, but he got noted. Ross Grimsley, by the way, uh, fantastic uh, mustache. That's that's some high mustache game. But to go back to uh, Parsons, you know, he's a big guy, like six foot five, and that's that's kind of primarily his value. It's interesting that in his first time through the minors, he didn't miss a ton of bats. He goes to Korea, pitches for a year and a half, has a back injury, ends up getting released in his second season there. Comes back to America at age 30. He was actually out with uh, the KBO for um, Dino NC, I think is the name, with Drew Ruchinski, for Ohio State kid who pitched in Cleveland's minors and got a deal with Oakland a year ago. Um, so he came back. Toronto signed him as a, as a free agent. And for the first time in his career, a guy who missed like close to about eight bats per nine was was over 10 last year in the minors. Now his walk rates had also gone up. Uh, basically, a lot of Blue Jays fans were kind of surprised that he A, made the team and B, that he made it through the whole offseason on the 40 man roster. He was kind of roster father ish, but uh, not to not to the Blue Jays. They liked him and Cleveland traded something again of value for this guy. They gave up two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That is now 500000 in international money. Cleveland had already got the guys they wanted to get. I mean, 500000 is a decent chunk they've given away in those two trades. You could get a pretty solid prospect. So it's a little disheartening that they're using it this way. Um, you know, it, uh, anyone who's like, oh, they're being cheap. Well, not really, because 250000 is, if they spent that money, um, it's still going to probably be less than it's costing to pay a Wes Parsons or to pay a uh, Peter Strzelecki this year. So not, not really. Um, but I would have loved to have seen that extra money used. But Parsons is, he's a, got four pitches. He's got a mid-90s fastball. Big guy, big fastball. That that would be the scouting report in a box. Uh, command isn't the strongest. Um, Cleveland's not always the best at, at command help. He's got an option left. Um, he has a baseball option. Unlike Ben Lively, who has just all the real life options. But yeah, uh, you know, Arthur Wesley Parsons. It's a great full name. Full circle management represents him. And he's probably going to spend most of the year in AAA. And then when 99 is ready to come off the 60 day disabled list, he's, I assume, the 
first guy off unless there's someone else who's just not playing well where they figure something else out. I mean, it is two organizations that liked him. Um, I would be curious to, I didn't get enough of a chance today to, to dig into his AAA data from a year ago, see if maybe there's some good spin data, something else a little bit, you know, behind the scenes, like the overall performance wasn't great for who he was, but I mean, he, he worked and he got to pitch in the majors this year, you know, he, for an undrafted free agent, the first time through, you know, he made it to the big leagues um, with Atlanta in 2019 and color uh, Colorado as well that year. That's, I mean, that's kind of amazing. Not a lot of undrafted guys work their way up to the majors. And then he made it back in 2024, five year hiatus worked into his thirties. Clearly this guy, you know, is, gonna work he's gonna put in time um i i wish i could tell you hey he's gonna help and be part of that solution when it comes to the rotation i i'm not willing to say that um he's more depth it's another swing at depth for the team and you know he was they they could have claimed him on waivers um but they had to work out a trade like you know that they they had to go out so that likely means that they thought someone else would claim him so he might actually stick around there there's when enough teams like him, there's got to be something that we don't know. That is at least my assumption when it comes to this. Um, so I keep, keep the name in the back of your head. He's, he's going to start in uh, AAA and he's going to give him some depth. But for whatever reason, teams are liking Wes Parsons, even though the statistical performance isn't strong. And the, the pitches on paper look, you know, average-ish. There's to below average, because let's be honest, if he had four average pitches, he'd be a no doubt starter but they like something. There is something there that is intriguing multiple teams. So keep, keep a kind of a half an eye on Wes Parsons. Um, we're going to come back and talk about the team on deck, the dreaded New York Yankees on today's locked on guardians. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball is in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. This is when we tell you to really be the times to go check out FanDuel because it's not always guaranteed. That's 150 bets, 150 bucks, win or lose. Often it's win. This is the time to go and jump. If you've been debating FanDuel now, now it's the time to make your bet on everything from slam dunks to home runs. To slap shots, all in an app that is safe and secure and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win, which is what it should be for the Guardians facing the White Sox. Yeah, we get FanDuel's a fantastic sponsor there. Give us fantastic sport. We love FanDuel. Half the time you have to win to get your money. This is automatic. If you've been on the fence, jump now. Uh, what are you waiting for? Visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book so let's talk about this new york yankees team uh <laughs> the funny and i'm laughing because i was just kind of um plugging some numbers here so cleveland is high has a higher ops than new york weird statement right uh cleveland is currently 11th new york is 13th cleveland and kansas city are tied so the two teams at 11 then the yankees are next up uh, New York has a higher on base percentage in Cleveland. Cleveland has a higher slugging percentage, as one expects. That the team with Juan Soto, Giancarlo Stanton, Aaron Judge would have the lower slugging percentage. Now, in fairness, that is updated through today, where Cleveland hit 27% of their home runs um, <laughs> against Chicago on Wednesday night. That's right. 27% of their home runs have hit so far came in one game. But that's just the situation that occurred doesn't change the fact that overall Cleveland's playing well. Um, you know, they have a solid on base, solid slugging percentage. New York does have more home runs, but Cleveland's got all those doubles. They have 21 doubles. That's four more. The New York has four more home runs. Cleveland has three triples. New York has none. Uh, Cleveland, if you're curious, not first in doubles, not second. They're actually below the White Sox in doubles. You have to go all the way down to tied for 11th with 21. Braves have 31 doubles. And 14 home runs. The Braves are also sporting a 370 bat pip. So there, there's a little bit of room for regression when it comes to the Braves. The interesting thing as well with the Yankees is this team doesn't run. Only seven opportunities so far this year. Compare that to Cleveland, who has had 17 opportunities where they have run. Um, 
not the lowest. They're not not the Colorado Rockies. No, I'm sorry. Chicago Cubs are actually worse than the Rockies. And so are the car. I thought the Rockies, you know, being three out of three would be the worst. But there's a lot of teams that are just not running, which is weird with the rule changes. Um, but yeah, the, the Yankees are relying. They're getting on base a lot. And with it's going to be a test with the way that Cleveland has pitched. They're starting pitching. We're going to have to see how this goes, because right now, who have they faced? Well, Seattle. Seattle's got the 29th best OPS in baseball, a.k.a. second worst. Chicago White Sox, 26th, so bottom five. And Oakland is the number one offense Cleveland has faced in the early going. So that kind of tells you we're going from bottom six teams to the Yankees, who are more middle of the pack. The other interesting thing with both these teams, when you're comparing them and looking at what this weekend's going to be like, they're both very solid in the early going and pitching. Um, you know, ERA is not a great way to judge, but if you just look at ERA, New York is third, Cleveland is fourth. Um, Cleveland is striking out a lot more. They have 22 more strikeouts, which is one of those things that we really should be highlighting and talking about because a year ago, they weren't missing bats. That's part of their problem with the pitching staff. All of a sudden, the strikeouts went away. Right now, they're fourth in baseball. Only the Red Sox, Padres, and Dodgers have more. And that's with the rotation um, being beat up and not great. Let's be honest. Rotation is not, for the most part, outside of Bieber, been very consistent. Um, there's not been a lot of going deep. The bullpen is what's carrying this team. And that's the other side of it. So, the, well, of course, I always do this. I close the tabs. I need the pitching matchups. Um, it's what Nestor Cortez, Lucas Gill, and um, Clark Schmidt. And I know the New York ones, but not Cleveland's, of course. Carrasco versus Schmidt, McKenzie versus Gill, Logan Allen versus Cortez. Uh, Schmidt is their second worst starter this year in performance. Carlos Rondon is actually their worst. Lucas Gill, surprisingly to me, I was never a big fan of his, has been very good. And Nestor Cortez has been solid after a down year a year ago. Their starting pitching has been really good. In New York this year, that has definitely been a strength. You know, Cortez and Stroman and Gill have all been very solid in the early going for them. Um, I mean, fantastic FIPS, fantastic performances. Uh, Gill is very walk prone, so hopefully Cleveland can take advantage of that. We haven't seen them get a lot of walks this year, but if you're going to beat him, he's also got a 37% K rate. You got to deal with the wildness and, and be able to, to rack up those walks. Um, Schmidt, he's been, you know, uh, I mean, his, his FIP is fine at 364. He's been a little unlucky. Their starting rotation's been solid. Their bullpen, not so much. Um, their best reliever by war, again, an imperfect stat, but just kind of makes a point here is Ian Hamilton. Remember when Cleveland got Ian Hamilton for Sandy Leon like two years ago, and then he never made it to the big leagues with Cleveland? He's been pretty good for the Yankees the last two years. He's been a hidden find for them. You know, he, he was and good for him. He was a guy who bounced around and did not get a ton, ton of opportunities. And last year is worth, you know, 1.1 wins for them. We had a 282 FIP. This year he's at 227 FIP, 28, 29 years old. He's been a revelation and just a, you know, a central part of the White Sox, or White Sox. He also pitched the White Sox at one point in time, the Yankees bullpen. But the rest of that bullpen is not been what you'd call stellar. They're, you know, the closer Clay Holmes has been fine. Um, six innings. You know, he hasn't given up a ton of runs. Um, but, you know, the, the rest of it, you're seeing kind of ups and downs, guys a little bit all over the place. It's not a bad pen. I mean, Clayton Beater was okay, and they already sent him down. Majeski has been down. They've been trying to move guys around to figure out how to make it work. But, you know, Victor Gonzalez, who's a uh, one of those deals with the Dodgers, hasn't done much. Jake Cousins, Luke Weaver, Caleb Ferguson was really rough. Um whereas Cleveland's pen has been the strength of this team. So it's, it's two pitching staffs doing very well. New York's being based off their starters with their pen being good enough and Cleveland's pen being fantastic and their starters being good enough. So it's going to be an interesting series in that regard. It's early. Stats don't mean a ton ton. And some of you will come back and say they never matter. Uh, but hitting wise, if you're just kind of curious who has come out hot for the Yankees, Volpe has been their best hitter in the early going. Then Soto, then Oswaldo Cabrera, Judge, and Stanton really stand out. Then after that, you get closer to Rizzo and Verdugo have been closer to average, but solid. It's it's a good lineup. Um, there are guys like, you know, that are not performing as well. Like, uh, you know, basically catching has been not great. Glyber Torres is struggling. 
Um, but if you're a Yankees fan after what occurred a year ago, I think they're enjoying the fact that this team is 10 and two. This is a good team uh, in New York so far. And that's even without Garrett Cole, it's with, you know, some of their health issues. And that's like on a very basic level, what separates the New Yorks and the Los Angeles is from the mid market teams like Cleveland. What does that money really buy you? Well, it buys you situations where a mile straw, even though mile straws in here still hamstrings what you can spend. Doesn't it? You know, New York's, Yes, they, they don't spend wildly like they used to, but they can still make up for that. Losing a Garrett Cole, they can go out and replace him. They can roll the, the dice on a um, on a Carlos Rondon. It hasn't worked out, but they can take those gambles. They've, you know, you look at New York's um, guys on the disabled list. Scott Efros, uh, Tommy K. Lyon, Jonathan Loisinga is now going to miss the whole year. McKinley Moore, Lou Trevino, Garrett Cole. Heck, we didn't get a chance to talk about this. I'll talk about it now. JD, they got JD Brubaker for free. So Pittsburgh gave up internet. We can, you know, I was talking about Cleveland and joking about cheapness with trading international slot money to get pitching depth. Pittsburgh gave up international slot money. So the Yankees would take JD Brubaker's modest salary. I think it's maybe a million dollars. And the Yankees get a useful six starter who should be back by about midseason. This is a guy who's going to be back mid to late in the year. And the Yankees got him for free because Pittsburgh didn't want to pay a little bit of extra money. That's what money gets you. You know, Dominguez being hurt as Oswaldo Perez, DJ LeMahieu, they got the pieces. They can go out and fill them in. They go make that trade for uh, Bowling Green's John Birdie. I'll get myself in trouble if I get this wrong. You know, they can go out and add Trent Grisham and then have him ride the bench. They can do things like that. And that's where they're going to have their advantage that they can have depth that other teams can't have. And Cleveland on the other hand is sitting there with, you know, Will Brennan batting fifth, you know, not, we, we can argue at another show at another point in time, like, you know, do you, do you want to block spots when Delata and Manzardo are close? Um, but right now, like some of this team is working great and some of this team there are holes. And I think even the most ardent positive fan would agree. There are some holes when it comes to Cleveland, things that we would like to see them fill in because they're so close to being a, a solid team. Sometimes it feels like the AL Central is the first to 75 wins. But, uh, you know, it, this team could be a playoff team as we've seen through the years. All you got to do is make it. Once you make it, who knows what's going to happen? That's what you need to do. And who knows? Maybe this weekend that bullpen will continue being a steel curtain. And Cleveland can can take two out of three. It is a hard series. If I am a betting man, I don't like any of the matchups for Cleveland. Carrasco's had his struggles. Clark Smith has been solid. McKenzie's had his struggles. Lucas Gill has been... Lucas Gill is going to implode at some point. You can't have walk rates like he does, and the strikeout rates are unsustainable. Then Logan Allen versus Nestor Cortez. Cortez has been a little bit better, but that's probably the matchup that I like the most um, just because of the inconsistencies. But yeah, that, that's that's this solo episode. Didn't talk any draft. Didn't, didn't get into that. I know people are probably shocked by that. Justin will be back tomorrow. I may or may not be. I might give myself a day off, um, see how I'm feeling on the off day. But uh, if it is Justin, he's probably going to do mailbag. So also put your mailbag questions below to help him out. Um, thank you for joining us this week. It's been a fun week. It is a fun team. It could have been hyper negative because of the Bieber news, but let's just enjoy, enjoy them. Um, I know I promised some like obscure video gameness. Um, give me a second to pause. So here we go. Find the obscure video. If you're watching on the YouTube, you can see uh super team games. Remember that the power pad. How about uh, some baseball simulator? Uh, some good old baseball on the Nintendo. And then where in time is Carmen San Diego? but in the, I believe the RBI baseball box. So uh, just some fun here at the end. But uh, again, thank you all for joining us. We appreciate and love all of our everydayers and just everyone who's joining in. We've had some great numbers of late, and that is all thanks to you. So thank you for being part of the Lockdown Guardians family team. Uh, we love you all, and go, go, Guardians, go.